from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for English learners from all language backgrounds who have already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who have already passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme for our first unit is Trains and Railroads. Amtrak Sunset Limited took us to Louisiana, where we visit in this bonus video. This is Amtrak Sunset Limited Eastbound Part 2, also available on my website at letscreate.org. Here we visit a part of Louisiana called Acadiana. Amtrak Sunset Limited rolls east from Los Angeles to New Orleans. Part 4 brought us to San Antonio, Texas. Fueling up in San Antonio, we had a bird's eye view of scrap metal awaiting recycling. Here it waits in a gondola. San Antonio's population has exploded in the past decade. It's now the seventh biggest city in the U.S. It attracts crowds of tourists, and today's visitors find more to see than just the historic Alamo. If you make San Antonio a stop, you'll find plenty to see and do. As part of New Spain and later Mexico, San Antonio has a rich history as an outpost on the Texas Plains, transitioning from dry West Texas deserts to humid East Texas lowlands. If you do get off the Sunset Limited to explore San Antonio, remember that this train only runs three days a week. That's enough time to have dinner in the Space Needle and to check out this well-used station that has so much character. You won't see another big city until... We rolled into Houston, seeing that city's skyline well before arriving at the station. Houston is the fourth largest city in the United States. Shipping, petroleum, medical services, and now financial services keep Houston prosperous. When my ancestors arrived here in the early 1900s, they could never have imagined these skyscrapers. Many of my relatives live in Houston. My great aunt took my family to see some of this great architecture built. These towers of steel and glass were built with oil money and made habitable by air conditioning. Downtown Houston is an impressive cityscape, but there's nothing impressive about Houston's tiny, artless train station. It's as if the city is ashamed of this great train. Houston's rocket speed growth began with the construction of the Houston Ship Canal allowing Houston to eclipse hurricane-ravaged Galveston as a major shipping port from the Gulf of Mexico. Houston was evacuated in 2005 for Hurricane Rita. All interstate highways became one-way escape routes. Escape velocity, speed to escape Earth's gravity, was controlled through the Johnson Space Center here in Houston. When Apollo astronauts radioed Houston, we have a problem. They were answered by engineers here in Mission Control. You can visit NASA and learn all about America's manned missions to the moon and more. If earlier history is more your style, San Jacinto Monument is near Houston. This monument celebrates Sam Houston's defeat of Santa Ana, winning a victory for the Texas Republic over Mexico. This began a slippery slope for Mexico. It would lose one-third of its territory to the United States in the ensuing years. 
We didn't see any of these attractions on this trip. We stayed aboard the Sunset Limited. Now we're moving away from the train station. Between Houston and Beaumont, we crossed the Lost River. I guess the river is lost somewhere down there under all that water. Next stop, Beaumont, Texas. It's near Beaumont where the infamous Spindletop oil field was discovered. Petroleum continues to be important to Beaumont in the form of petrochemical plants, and a lot of that gets shipped from this port. We continue eastward. After the small town of Orange, Texas, we cross the Sabine River into Louisiana. There's no shortage of wetlands here. This is stubble left over from the previous year's rice crop. It leads right up to this towering rice dryer. Rice field with just a couple of um, oak, big old oak trees in the middle. Someone used to live out there, no doubt. Seeing rice fields made me feel at home. I was fortunate to work on my uncle's rice farm when I was a teenager. Out in the field on a tractor, I would wave at Southern Pacific Sunset Limited, never dreaming that someday I would get to ride this train. The first stop for the Sunset Limited in Louisiana is Lake Charles. If you get off here, you'll find yourself along the Calcasieu River in southwest Louisiana. If you double back westward, you'll find this region's hidden gem. You'll need a car, truck, motorcycle, or bicycle. This bridge is older than Interstate 10. It was the old Highway 90 bridge over the Calcasieu River. Keep going west, up the steep grade. As a kid, I loved the rail, fashioned of countless pistol-shaped metal. Below, you can see the approach to the railroad bridge. You turn south near the town of Sulphur and head toward the Gulf of Mexico. You'll encounter the intercoastal waterway. We got to see this long barge traversing the canal. Texas all the way up through the east coast to Chesapeake Bay, I believe. Oh, that was good. Now we cross over the intercoastal waterway. This drawbridge pulls up for intercoastal traffic. We're in the South Louisiana marshes now. Shrimping fleet ready to go out. An area is still showing damage from Hurricane Rita back in 2005. Here's the hidden treasure. The Sabine National Wildlife Refuge. There are places to crab and fish in the refuge, just not here on the nature trail. There's a concrete trail here allowing visitors to explore the marsh without slogging through the mud. We were greeted with this flyby by the Louisiana Air Force, otherwise known as pelicans. Other species were out for observation, including the great egret, a species once hunted to the edge of extinction for its feathers. One of the coolest features of the Sabine Refuge is this elevated observation platform. Liz is eager to see some of the wildlife here at the Sabine Refuge. The pelicans paid us another visit. 
These are white pelicans, not the brown pelican. That's the Louisiana state bird. Pelicans. One species we didn't see on this cold January day was the Louisiana alligator. That was just fine with Liz and her dad, Charlie. And I'm glad I didn't see one of these guys. Goodbye, fella. One thing we did see near Lake Charles was this sugarcane harvest. The range of sugarcane cultivation grew tremendously with the building of a rum distillery in the town of Lacassine. My early experience on the farm near here did not include working with sugarcane. Big old trucks full of sugarcane. A lot of cypress. Further east on the Sunset Limited, we crossed the Mermintaw River. Mermintaw River. This is Mermintaw. So that's a rice field. That's a big rice field. Near here in the tiny town of Midland, there was once a local railroad between Midland and Gaydon. My grandfather was hired to do the engineering and surveying work to lay out the railroad. When the job was over, he stayed in nearby Crowley. That's where my father was born, and many years later, me and my brother and sisters. There's nothing left of that little railroad, but my family is still here in Louisiana. There's the Esterwood Post Office. Rice mill, we should be going right along Mill Street. The rice mills to the south of the track told me that we were in Crowley, the rice capital of the world, in my hometown. Here we're looking south. that take the rice away. Parkerson, your dad should be getting a view right of downtown Crowley. Now this is looking north. This is Parkerson Avenue looking toward the courthouse. So let's visit that courthouse in the center of Crowley. We're here in Crowley, Louisiana, and in the background you see the Acadia Parish Courthouse. This is what we call the court circle, although it's actually a square. And in this courthouse, of course, is a lot of records. So we're looking at this, this sign about uh, President Kennedy's speech when he was uh, still a senator. And the thing I remember about this, the, when I became aware that we even had a president, I was in elementary school, and my teacher came in the classroom crying, and we had never seen that before. And I remember her saying that the president had been killed, that the president had been shot. Many years later, President Kennedy's brother Ted would marry a girl from Crowley, Vicki Reggie. He spent his last years with her. This plaque commemorates Edwin Edwards, a favorite son from Crowley, who served four terms as Louisiana's governor. There was a likeness of the governor, but someone stole it. What you're looking at here is downtown Crowley. This is the view from the courthouse. And we're looking down in the 
looking toward the south on Parkerson Avenue, which is the main street that goes through uh, Crowley. Right here is a memorial to Bill Williams and Shell Cantor, and uh, there are a couple of radio, you could say radio pioneers, and uh, some of my heroes here in Crowley. In fact, uh, they had a lot to do with my first career. Uh, Bill Williams and Shell Cantor, first of all, became somewhat of hero figures in this area. There was a hurricane in 1957 called Hurricane Audrey, and in that hurricane, uh, most of the radio stations, I think all of the radio stations in the region went off the air because they lost the electricity and phone lines. KSIG and Crowley lost their phone lines to their transmitter, but uh, they had a generator out at the transmitter. So they actually, Bill Williams and Shell Canner, actually left the studio in the middle of the hurricane and went out to the transmitter shack at great danger to themselves because at hurricane force winds the tower could have crashed down around them and so they've been honored for their service in uh, in that uh, public safety function and that kind of made them heroes to me as I was growing up so in my teenage years uh, Shell Cantor the gentleman uh, above where it says Crowley Louisiana I used to go down and talk to him in the radio station every morning and uh, just see how it was done, just learn from him. And he was probably the most tolerant guy I ever saw. I never would have tolerated someone just standing around watching me every morning. But he did, and I learned a lot of stuff from him. And uh, so these were people I eventually ended up working for KSIG. It's my first job in radio. And uh, got to know Bill Williams a little bit and Shell Canner a lot. He would always ask uh, my brother how I was doing throughout the year and a lot of times I would see him when I would visit uh, back down to Crowley. So they kind of started my first career in radio, Bill Williams and Shell Cantor. This is in Crowley, Louisiana also. This is St. Michael's Church. This is the uh, big Catholic church in the area and being South Louisiana a lot of the population is Catholic. I saw my cousin Sandra married in this church. In fact, I think that's the only time I've ever been inside of St. Michael's Church. And the church is looking good. It's being well taken care of. Okay, what you're looking at behind me is the Dixie Hardware Store, or what used to be the Dixie Hardware Store. And that's what I've known it for all my life as I was growing up. What I didn't realize until just a few years ago is in the upper story of the Dixie Hardware Store, there's an old opera house and that's where people when back when Crowley on the weekends was just flooded with people coming to town that's not in my lifetime uh, they would come see works of art in the opera well now the opera house has been renovated and so they're actually doing performances there now and I understand they've done a beautiful job of renovating where the Dixie hardware store used to be is the lobby of the opera house with a grand staircase going up into the actual opera house. What you're looking at is a crawfish chimney and I know they do commercial raising of crawfish but when I was a kid our uh, experience with crawfish was especially after a rain these kind of chimneys we'd find these in the uh, in the yard and what we do as kids we would tie bacon to a string and then we would very slowly move that string down the chimney and then if you very slowly and gently and patiently pulled it up there'd be a crawfish hanging onto the bacon and you could actually catch the crawfish out of its chimney that way so that was some of the early experiences with crawfish of course today crawfish is a major industry in Louisiana boats like these collect crawfish from ponds and from rice fields flooded during winter. They use these traps to capture the delicacy. That is, if the egrets and the black curlews don't get to them first. This is Lafayette, the closest station to Crowley. Not far from Lafayette is St. Martinville, home of Longfellow Evangeline State Park. The majestic live oaks here had me looking for the Evangeline Oak, setting for Longfellow's epic poem. 
that one's so gross. This is a cypress tree outside the museum here. An interesting multimedia presentation ended with this iconic Louisiana view of a Creole plantation. We enjoyed a living history tour with this talented guide dressed in period attire. However, it's just as good for stirring up air, and for nine or ten months out of the year, it would have been in use. Um, this is the job of a child from the slave quarters. Before TV and radio, there was always a game table. Chess, checkers, dominoes, carved out of wood, if you couldn't afford ivory ones. And uh, were you ever threatened with being pelayed when you were young? Did anybody ever say they were going to pelay you? You never heard that, nor you? No. Okay. If the football team lost badly, you'd say, oh, we got pelayed. Or your parents would say, do that again. Pelay. This is the pilon, oh. the multi and pilon. And when you pelay something, you really pound it and smash it. But for us, it just meant some kind of punishment. Besides the Creole plantation, this state park features trails steeped in Louisiana's landscapes and history. The park's interpretive services help visitors make the distinction between Creoles and Cajuns. Okay, here goes. Creoles were French-speaking families with deep roots in Louisiana from back when this area was claimed by France. Cajuns were also French-speaking people, but they came to the area later after being forced to leave a northern area called Acadia by the English after the French and Indian War. Creoles first from the West Indies, Cajuns later from the Northeast, and Cajuns refugees. These poor refugees found great riches here in abundance, the abundance of wildlife that sustained them as food, and being left alone to live their lives by the cultural values they brought with them. It's often summed up by the saying, let the good times roll. So right here on the banks of Bayou Tesh, the Cajuns took their first brave steps to rebuild their lives, where so many built a rich culture and made their way for prosperity in this new land. This was all great, but this is not where the Evangeline Oak stood. For that, we had to go to the heart of St. Martinville. This is an important setting in Longfellow's most famous work, Evangeline. So here's that legendary tree from that epic poem. And here's that now familiar this bayou, Bayou Tesh. Bayou Tesh. In it semi-downtown section of this town. So, St. Martinville is known as the heart of Acadiana. There are other regions in the state, 
But this is the French-speaking region that blended so many cultures to form such a rich cultural experience and world-renowned food. To learn more about the arrival of the Cajuns, we visited the St. Martinville Cultural Heritage Center. Inside was a register of all the Acadian families who migrated here. I read many family names I knew, last names of kids I went to school with. The story of the expulsion from Nova Scotia and Halifax was beautifully demonstrated by this mural along with the reading of some historical documents and first-person accounts by those who lost their homes and were separated from their families. Listen carefully to this child's experience. ...and practice our Catholic religion. A few weeks later, Papa told me to get dressed. We had to go to the church. Why, I asked. Papa said, don't worry, just get dressed. Mama was crying and hugged both of us. As we walked to the church, we saw women and children crying. I asked Papa what was happening. The British were not pleased with the Acadians because we refused to sign the oath. We refused to let the British tell us how to live. They may send us to different places to live, but promise me that no matter what happens, you will always remember your Acadian heritage. Over 400 men and boys reported to the church, but it is a trick. The soldiers locked the doors, and the poor Canaan stayed for almost a month. It was so crowded that all boys 21 years and younger were ordered into boats waiting in the bay. So it came to be that I, Jean Samer, only 11 years old, became separated from my family. It was a long, difficult time before finally settling in Louisiana. Some exiles settled in the British colonies, while others returned to France, where they were not welcome and where they didn't feel like they belonged. Some arranged to travel back to America, where they settled in Spanish-controlled Louisiana. They weren't welcomed by the Creoles there either, but that didn't stop them from making Louisiana their home. The story of the Cajun migration is beautifully told in St. Martinville a few miles from Lafayette. There's a lot of history there, too. Lafayette has historical interpretive sites like Acadian Village and Vermilionville. It also has numerous art galleries. If history and art exploration makes you hungry, don't worry. Lafayette has more restaurants per capita than any city in the United States. Louisiana's food is legendary, and you're right in the heart of Acadiana when you're in Lafayette. The Sunset Limited continued eastward through New Iberia and on to New Orleans, but we got off here.